talk about a knowledge object in Splunk called reports. Reports give us the ability to uh, customize, standardize different searches in Splunk and have them readily available for other people to use or for stuff that we're going to look at often. Um, if we use our Lane EDU app, uh, we'll it's object number five here, help reports management, have a brief overview of them. We're gonna pretty much cover um, how to create a report, how to schedule a report, how we can accelerate that report, how to create an alert from a report, and how to save those information as a report, as a dashboard panel. All right, so let's get into that. First thing you're gonna do is we're just gonna create a query and we're gonna make it pretty simple. We're just going to go index equals lame training. We're going to go source type equals lame con. And I just want to get a list of my most commonly occurring source IPs. So if I do something like this, this could be a dashboard that I want to see frequently. I want to see uh, the IPs that are being used. So I might use this. Instead of having someone come in here and write this query, uh, maybe I end up we want to turn into a visualization, whatever. There's reasons we want. We don't want to write this out every time. So we can come up here and we can hit Save As, and we can hit Make It a Report. Um, I mentioned the other options. We can save it as an alert. Uh, we can save it as a new dashboard or a panel inside a dashboard. We're going to cover right now just saving as a report. I'm going to call it lame source connections. I don't need to put underscores in here. All right, let's just keep them there just to make it simple. All right, so then we're going to give it a good description. Uh, summer uh, statistical count of all source IPs. Um, I can choose to give a time range picker, not choose a time range picker. If you don't, it defaults to what you have. I'm going to leave it as, sure, let's leave the time range picker in there. I'm going to hit save. We want to set the permissions. We want to make sure it's available in the app. Give read write access here. And we now have a report. So anytime you come in here, you'll now notice that the the URL is kind of changed. It gives us the name of the report here. Um, I can change the time here. I get my results and I kind of get a nice little, uh, I guess exactly what it is, report. I can um, edit here. I can, again, we, so let's go here. I mentioned we can create a report. Cool, we've got the report created. Now let's just say I'm here, I'm on the uh, main page. We'll go here to, I want to go settings. I can go pull up my reports, searches, reports, and alerts right here. And I'll get a list of all the uh, reports and alerts that I've created. And there it is inside Lame EDU. There's my Lame source connections. And I, so I could, if I click it, I can, I can see the uh, query. If I run, it will show me the query there. I can open link in new tab and let's see here. So let's look at these different options. I'm going to edit this here and we mentioned we've set it up. I can change my permissions. Let's put a schedule. Um, that we're going to, actually, we won't come to scheduling at the moment. We're going to do acceleration first because that'll make more sense. What we, so the reason you would accelerate is what if you had a query that takes a lot of data and it's looking through massive amounts of data. And so when you go to that dash and you're going to load this up into a dashboard and say it takes a few minutes to actually load up all that data from the query, you don't want that to run and have the user waiting for it. So you can actually hit a edit acceleration and allow it to accelerate the search and thereby it'll actually search that data quicker. It'll take the data that's involved with the uh, query and make it accelerated, which means it creates a summary. I'm gonna put a link down to when I start doing some summary data, um, how, how that all works. Summary data is really, really cool. It actually takes a, it puts it in its own index and so it'll be much quicker than searching through all the raw data. And so if I go here to edit acceleration, 
I can just hit accelerate the report. And I'm going to say, how much of this data do I want to accelerate? Really what it's doing, just so we go back to this query, it's going to take this data right here. So I'm going to take the source IP field and this count field, and it's going to take it every five minutes or so, and it's going to store those results in a accelerated data field. And then it will actually go search that data in a much more in a faster format. And so uh, if you if you know you're only going to be looking at one day's worth of data, accelerate one day, seven days, one month, three months, one year, all time. Just realize, as it mentions here, acceleration increases storage and processing costs because when you accelerate, it's going to run every five minutes your query and store that the results every five minutes. And that data is being stored outside of your already your index. So your data, your ability to store logs for a time will actually be reduced because you're storing additional data. So just be aware of that. It sounds great to store all time. But it's going to take a, it's going to basically double the amount of data you have stored, and so thereby your retention times will really come down. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it at one day, and I can just hit save, and it will go off and accelerate the data. And you'll notice it's accelerated because it's got this lovely little check mark saying, "Hey, this model is accelerated," and it's as simple as doing that, and your data is accelerated. That means it will actually load the query much faster. Other things you can do, you can do an edit the schedule. And you can say, I'm going to schedule this report. This will remove the time picker, as it says right here. No longer do you get a time picker. What it's going to do is it's going to run, let's say, every hour. And you can choose to go so many minutes past the hour. I could go search a time range. Maybe I want to go every hour, and I just want to look back 60 minutes. Um, maybe I want a 60-minute window. Maybe I want a 24-hour window. And the principle is what it's going to do is when you schedule this report, it's going to run the report, save it, and nothing is, every time someone comes and looks at this dashboard, no matter if new data keeps rolling in, the same results will come back until you come over this again. So if you schedule this every day, for the entire day, the results on that, da on that panel, that report will always be the same data. As soon as one day is reached, it'll run the query again, store those results, and everyone will see the next day's data. If you do this in a week, the data will only change every week, every month, or you can use good old fashioned cron, cron schedule here and change it just like that. But anyway, that's the general principle. So you can accelerate your data, which will allow you to search your data faster, but it will be more or less real time. Um, you can schedule your search, which means that uh, during the windows between one scheduled search and the next, the data will not update itself, but it will be lightning fast. Pretty much uh, your panels will just come right back with their data. So it, it all depends on how you want your dashboards to be displayed. All right. The last piece I want to touch real quick is we talked about when we've covered this little help reports, we've talked about creating a report, scheduling a report, accelerating a report. Now let's talk about creating an alert. Simple thing to do. What I want to do is I want to add an action. And then I can create different tickets. I can make things. I could have it send an email to me. If you have Phantom, you could send it to Phantom. You could create a webhook, run a script, um, output your results to a lookup. Sometimes that might be nice. You want to have your stuff in um, a lookup file. You could create your own log event at another another location. You could send it to ITSI, IT Service Intelligence, send it to ServiceNow. Um, but basically the alert is going to, and, and so those are different Those are different actions you can do on your schedule. I, I said I was doing an alert. I, I apologize. I jumped the gun. This is not an alert. This is just part of your scheduling and it's just going to run the schedule report and the events from it can be done, can be sent to different actions. Um, we definitely this out of the scope of this this uh, tutorial. Um, let's go create a new search. I'm going to do a save as this time. I'm going to come save as an alert. I'm going to make it real quick. Uh, alert on source IPs. Um, I can shoot, have it run every week, expire, etc. And the concept is, hey, you know what? I've got 2,916. I could do something like that, or I have five IP addresses, something like this. I got five IP addresses coming back. If the number of IP addresses is ever greater than five, uh, send me an alert. And then again, I can 
send all those custom events that I was talking about. So the principle behind a an alert is you set the criteria, and it's all set here with this trigger condition. I, in this case, I probably should I should schedule. I should run probably on every hour, um, and then I'm going to if it's greater than six, or I can choose is equal to rises by. And so it's going to be looking at the numbers, and you can set different statistical chances. Definitely need to take alerts in more detail. Look for me to put out a tutorial on that. But I wanted to briefly cover it. You can send your results in as an alert, and that's a quick way of notifying yourself anytime a condition exceeds or drops, exceeds a certain criteria that you've set up. And that's alerts. And the very last thing, we're just going to come in here. We're going to come Splunk. I have my help, uh, my search reports. It's called Lime Source Connections. That's the report I made. Now I'm just going to go and create myself a dashboard. Come in here, create me a dashboard, and I'm going to call it Create New Dashboard. We're going to do Report Lame Report Tutorial, and just leave it. Make it Share Nap. Use Classic Dashboards. And if I have created a uh, a report, I can go add a panel. I can make a new one, or I can make a new from a report. And if I come in here and I type in lame, I immediately see, oh, there's your lame source connections. And I can add this to the dashboard. And so I can add reports into dashboards. So it's a really good way of understanding things. Report, a dashboard can have multiple reports. A report has a single query and they all pile up. And so you can write a query, you can make that into a report, and then you can add multiple reports into a dashboard. And that's the general principle. You can add as many. I could go in and add another new from report if I want to. I um, Anyway, so that is a very quick tutorial on dashboard on using da uh, dashboards and reports and primarily concepts reports again um, we've covered that you can create reports schedule them accelerate the data create an alert off that data or save as a dashboard panel which it, and use those reports in another on, any, in, on one or more dashboards. Anyway, I hope this helps you. If you like this, uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to continue putting out content uh, uh, in the Splunk, helping you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja.